I have taken these motors out of the sharp air conditioner indoor units. Today, I will try to fix these. I have already tried to repair a couple of motors. Let me show you the situation of those motors because I will fix one of the motors. These blower motors are disposable and they have two types in them. This is the first type, which is completely disposable. This is a Panasonic motor. Its circuit board is attached at the top of the motor's body. Removing its circuit is difficult because it is completely packed inside. And if such a motor goes bad, we have zero chance of fixing it. But this type of blower motor is semi-disposable. This means that you can throw them away, and you can fix them as well. But I had difficulty fixing this motor. Let me show you how. You can see I have removed the back cover of its motor. While removing the back cover, this area of the motor breaks. The cover is attached to this motor. The body of this motor is also broken while attempting to remove it. Today, I will try to remove the cover without breaking the motor body using a new technique. Some piece of the motor body has been left inside the metal cover. A big gap was left between them when I attached the cover to the motor, which is not good, for cuts are made inside the motor. The first, this is the second, this is the third, and over here is the fourth one. These cuts are made to remove the cover easily from the motor. I will now hold it inside a bench vise. I will not tighten the motor too much in the bench vise because the material of this motor body is made of resin which could break on tightening it excessively in the bench vise. The winding inside the motor could also get faulty. That is why I have not tightened the motor excessively inside the bench vise. You should have two tools to remove the cover, a flat screwdriver and a hammer. I am using a rubber hammer right now. I will heat the motor with the hot air gun. I will apply heat on the corners of the motor. I am removing this rubber from here. Now, I will heat it up. I had tried to remove the cover of the other two motors without heating them, and thus, that is why they broke. I hope that heating its cover will remove the cover without breaking the body of the motor. I will heat the cover enough that it neither overheats nor cools down to remove it easily. Heating the cover will make the glue melt that is holding the motor cover together. It has been quite heated up. I will hit the hammer on the screwdriver inside the cuts that I showed you earlier. Now, on the opposite cut. I think the cover has been loosened up. Yes. It has loosened up. I will remove the cover using a cloth because it was heated up. I will pull it out. It is quite hot. I will push it out using a screwdriver. The bearing is attached to the cover, so I am trying to dislocate the bearing from the cover. I think the cover has dislocated from the bearing. It has still not dislocated. The cover is getting out with a little force. Finally, after a lot of effort, we have successfully removed its cover, and the motor body has not been broken from the corners. Now, see its cover. A minor amount of resin of the motor is left inside it which is not a big deal, and it has also gone. I will remove this plastic cover from it now. The plastic has been completely damaged. The plastic has also been removed. The IPM of the motor has been burst. There is a hole in it. I will now separate the motor's body from the circuit. These three points are attached here, and UVW is written on these points. They are soldered with the three-phase winding in the motor. Before desoldering these joints, I heated them with the soldering iron and added a new solder to the joints. This will make the joint softer. I will push its rotor upward, and I will slightly heat the pins. I will put a scrapper beneath the circuit board, and push the circuit board upward by heating the pins. The circuit is black from the bottom, and the motor's body is also turned black from this area. The rotor of this motor needs to be cleaned because the circuit could have been damaged due to the rotor not being clean. I will remove the rotor from the motor. I will remove this lock to separate the rotor. The lock has been removed. The rotor has also come out. I will clean it before fitting it back in the motor. For now, I will keep it in a poly bag to keep it safe from dirt. The winding of the motor needs to be okay. In my case, I have multiple motors. If the winding of the motor is bad and the circuit board is repaired, so I will use it in another motor with a good winding. If you have a single motor, then it's important to test the motor. Before testing the winding, 
let me show you another problem with the motor. You have to be careful with this. This motor has four pins, but I had desoldered three pins of the circuit board. You have to check which three pins need to be tested. Place the circuit board on the body to check which pins you will check for testing the windings. The circuit has been fixed here, which means we need to test the three pins on the left. First of all, Let's check with this right pin what reading we get. The reading is 86.5 ohms. Let's check it with the next pin. The reading is the same at 86.5 ohms. This means that with this pin, all the pins reading are the same. I will check the readings between the UVW pins. It's showing 173 ohms on these pins. I will check it with the next pin. The reading is the same. I will now check these other two pins. The reading is the same. You will not get the correct reading if you mistakenly check the winding with this pin. You will think that the winding in the motor is bad. Before working on the circuit board, I will clean it up. Without cleaning, we will not get what else is damaged in the circuit. That is why cleaning is important. This IPM is damaged in this circuit. I will remove it from the circuit board. It was burned, so to remove it from the circuit board, we can use two methods. First, we can desolder it and remove it from the board. With the second method, we can remove it from the board quickly. I will cut the pins of this bad IPM from the circuit. Cutting the pins will make it quicker to remove the IPM from the board. In a few seconds, the IPM has been removed from the circuit. The number of the IPM is TPD4122K. This was installed in the circuit. I will now check the rotor of this motor. The rotor of its motor is rotating smoothly with the hand. I have now made all the motor connections with the tester to test the motor. The tester is powered on. I am gradually rotating the motor to pass the operating voltages to the motor. The motor has started to work. I will increase the speed of the motor. The motor has started to operate properly. And this is how you can easily fix these motors. Support the channel on Patreon by joining the membership. Click on the left or right thumbnail to watch the next videos. And subscribe. Thank you.